We'll see that tonight they'll be studying another um, another story about Jesus healing. As they study the healings, we will feel it. <laughs> and we have extra help in two realms. Tonight, the Good Spirit asked us to study a little bit and experience its mind and heart, everything about the Spirit is real and art and how it can impact our health. Just as a teaser, okay? Leon Denis, he wrote this book, Spiritism in the Arts. And he says, Spiritism comes to open new perspectives and unlimited horizons of art. Why is it important? You see, we'll open ourselves very much and deeply. And then in the second part, we'll go to this very section. Spiritism comes to open new perspectives and unlimited horizons for art. We think that art is for a few, is only for a specific type of people, but science already shows to us that to say the least, the right hemisphere of our brain is has an inbuilt system to modulate that artistic us. But what are we doing with it? Half of us is not even there. Mm, is that why we feel like kind of impaired in life? Maybe. So today we're gonna be granted an opportunity to receive new tools to live a more fulfilled life as co-creators of God. We're co-creators. The artist is already in us. What are we doing with it? What is art all about? So to help us deepen the feeling first, we have our friend Greg Palmer. He came all the way from Iowa to here to sing. He's a professional opera singer and he became acquainted with spiritism, has been studying it, especially with uh, the Spiritist Society of uh, Chicago, right? Illinois. And then Kardec Radio too, right? Thank you. And he has sung in uh, Spiritist Symposia, in Spiritist events before, and this is not the first time he comes. He came for the SSBA's anniversary. And now we're delighted because he said, I'll be around and I can come by. I'm like, oh my gosh, what a treat for us. And he's going to do like a, and I will say this, mini recital, not because it's mini in the greatness of it, but because it's shorter than usual. But at least for the first 30 minutes, we'll be able to fly with him hi right greg i could say much more but we are so thankful that you came here so we would like to welcome you and be with you okay What I'm going to, what, what is going to be read is from the book called Planetary Transition from the Spirit Manuel Filomino de Miranda through Debaldo Franco. 
The ceremony began with a young singer who accompanied by an organ, sang the beautiful religious piece, Panis Angelicus, authored by St. Thomas Aquinas, for the work Sacrius Solimentus and set to the music of Caesar Franck in 1872, creating a psychosphere of extremely high vibrations. Dr. Gilomerius was led to the center table. Next to everyone's delight and amazement, the Proviello of Assisi, which is St. Francis of Assisi, himself entered, accompanied by Sister Claire, which is St. Claire of Assisi, in the splendor of her youth and beauty, and a few other companions of his revolution of love in the past. The saint radiated transcendent goodness, such as we have never experienced before. His face was soft and kindly. He was clad in the worn robes of his early days of ministry on the earth, and the air vibrated with tender, harmonious, and colorful energies. Greeted at the entrance by a previously organized committee, the two apostles, spouses of Sister Poverty, were led to the table. <coughs> bread of angels is made bread for all mankind. Gifted bread of heaven puts all foreshadowing to an end. The body of the Lord will nourish the poor, the humble, and the servile.
talking about Master Chief getting a friend. And I was thinking while I was watching it, I wanted to tweet it to you. She is in this song. <laughs> what a friend we have in Jesus, which is a traditional hymn. I think it's a Baptist hymn. It was written by a young uh, parish priest in Ireland. this song, the, the lyrics for it, it later became a song, he didn't write the melody. He wrote the lyrics for his mother. Right, okay. Do I need to back up, Carlos? Yes, a little bit. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is for Vanessa, because based on a, a, a lecture she gave on, on our friend Jesus. And the, uh, this, the lyrics of the song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, this hymn, were written by Joseph, uh, I can't think of his name right now. Um, he, he's an Irish uh, um, preacher. And he wrote this song for his mother, who was in need of some comfort. And he wrote this song. The words of this hymn totally transformed the whole idea of Christianity. He, he talks about Jesus and God as being your best friend, a friendly God, a compassionate God, a God that's always there for you. And he, he revolutionized the idea of, of this. He published it anonymously. Ten years later, he decided that he wanted to let people know um, that he and God wrote the poem together. And this happened in 1855. So I thought that was significant that that happened. <laughs> it's powerful. <laughs>
Times said the Lord, the kingdom of God is at hand. Until today, thousands of people have waited for its arrival through spectacular exterior events. Many expect influence people cataclysms and feed their imagination with ghostly scenes incompatible with the divine mercy which presides our destinies.
mutinous crowds cause a movement. Flammable fluids in the atmosphere turn it into the devouring fire. Withering bombs destroying entire nations. Those people usually count on the uncanny and the fantastic so that they can feel they are at the gateway of the great change. There is no doubt that such catastrophic events may take place at any moment in people's experience in the field of nature. However, far from meaning the kingdom of God, they only reveal the need for a new battle, with a rougher work to be done by those who take part in the evolutional wars of humanity. The kingdom of God is at hand, yes it is, but before all else, in our capacity to build it inside us, through the heaven that we can offer to our neighbor's soul. Let's attend to the accomplishments of the duties life brings to us, helping as much as we can for the victory of the good by following the love the Lord bequeathed to us, and we will reach as early as possible the celestial atmosphere for us and for others. That's why Jesus likewise was adamant and fair when stated, when they say to you that the kingdom of God is here or there, do not believe them, because in truth, the kingdom of God is within you. Emmanuel, Psychography, Chico Xavier, Free Translation. I, I want to share that uh, this video was done by Luis Sergio Marota. We have friends from Belo Horizonte here, and Solange was from his group, his Geraldinho Lemos group. Yeah, and he's also the host of uh, Kardec Radio's program uh, um, about the gospel according to spiritism. And I keep telling him, I said, we need you live because he does phenomenal works, right? So this is a message to him as well.
back in the trap by sending reviews very quickly. Before he goes through the original scores and, and makes his own arrangements, and he had a, a custom guitar that he that he was having uh, made for him when he when I contacted him and he thought that was a perfect guitar. It's a seven string guitar, and uh, so I'm guessing that you know same thing with the score to his interpretation. Yeah. Of the <laughs>
it's hard to put in words, right? Feelings. And it's a blessing for us to have this beautiful short recital to show to us what Leon Denis has written. We all remember we are in the transition and the transition from trials and expiations to regeneration. And regeneration is all about regenerating ourselves, meaning renewing ourselves, getting to acquire new habits and leaving the old habits behind. So we need to learn how to manage um, the emotions that have been driving us to the old conditionings. We go back to the old conditionings because we feel safer. Because we are afraid or we feel angry, sadness, etc. So we need to manage this in order to acquire the new. That's why Jesus said we need hope, faith and courage. It's chapter 8 of the book Good News by Brother X through Chico Xavier. It says, To Bartholomew, hope, faith, and courage. We never talk about courage, but being courageous about what? Or doing the new, because we're afraid. We don't know. Oh my gosh, I'm not used to this. It's weird. What's going to happen? So Leon Denis, as a good uh, thinker in spiritism, he wrote that book about spiritism in the arts. And in the regeneration, in that moment on earth, the arts will serve a new purpose, to illuminate, to inspire. What we've experienced now is a, a glimpse of what arts in all forms will be in the world of regeneration. No longer arts will serve sensuality and power, domination, craziness, because Leon Denis is going to define to us. So just as a teaser, just to complement what Greg showed to us, made us feel, we're going to bring some of Leon Denis' own teachings in this book. So, spiritists know that there is immense help in the communion between the beyond with the celestial spirits to artists, writers, poets. No longer we're going to feel we're alone when we're writing, singing, drawing, and we should teach our children. You're never alone. If you like drawing, you bet you're not alone. Oh, but I don't know. Well, just think about it. We're not asking them to be mediums. We're just asking them to consider a fact that the spirits are around us and they will join us in our everyday tasks, including playing, writing, drawing, singing, everything. So it's a work in four hands, four hand collaboration in art. And he says, the awareness of this collaboration gives us the measure of our weakness. It teaches us to be humble in our success. Human pride dries out the source of high inspiration. This is Leon Denis at the very beginning of the book. Teaches, uh, teaching us a new way of dealing with success. First, it doesn't come from us. The intelligence is given by God, the gifts, the talents. And when we succeed, we were never alone, whether at work or in the works of art. So he talks about our co-creative power he reminds us that not only every spirit created by God possesses the divine seed of intelligence, but also a part of the power of creation. This is deep. You and I, 
says Leon Denis, we're granted a part of the power of creation, and he's right. And many of us are undergoing depression, anxiety, panic, and all sorts of things because we don't want to use it, or we're misusing it. But if we embrace it, we cannot stay in the comfort zone. We need to push. That's why Andrea Luis says in the book Evolution into Worlds, we are learning beings. Effort and repetition is the only way to progress. We cannot stay there and say, how many people say when they get to adulthood, this is who I am and how I am. And that's the way it's going to be. And then people start thinking about retirement and feeling afraid of what's going to happen next. And they stop learning. Fear. Why am I going to learn new thing? No, no, no. I need to work, work, work and get a lot of money to get to my retirement. And then we are blocking our very power of creation. We cannot create in stress under stress. Stress is for survival. When our sympathetic system is on, we are in the fight or flight mode. We don't create. We just preserve ourselves. We start creating when we are relaxed, when we are surrendered. It's all about that balance of the feminine and the masculine. And Leon Denis continues, spirits are called to manifest this co-creative power throughout their evolution, both in the planetary incarnations and in the life in the spirit realm. Read Andrea Louis' books. We're going to see how we continue to be co-creators in the afterlife. So when a child is born, Welcome, dear soul. You're born to co-create with God. Are you ready? Are the parents ready to support this co-creative, co-creativeness of all of us? So that's where Leon Denis redefines inspiration. In spiritism, inspiration is a procedure of the transmission of divine light. So nothing comes from us. The greatest ideas, when I see people, my plan, my idea, my this, at the end of the day, this mind doesn't exist because it comes from God. That's why Kardec learned to say, we as our, because we are never, ever alone especially when we talk about the greatest ideas of progress, they first exist in the spiritual realm and then manifest in the material realm. When we learn about the seven spheres of the earth, we talk about the sphere, the highest sphere, which is of the governance of the planet. It's where the strategies of the good are planned out with the team of the Christ and then they are transmitted to the other layer arts and sciences and from there on it keeps materializing manifesting itself until it gets to us when we go to sleep we can pray for the permission to access those that information for all of us. There are many people on earth who are already being advocates for the regeneration of humanity. They are already ahead of our time and often misunderstood by the majority of people who are still numb or blind or as we know they are in the sleepy mode like they are not aware. That's why Leon Denis emphasizes to us that if the will of the spirit ourselves 
who perceives these waves is sufficient, he can greatly benefit from it. So if we want, we can connect with these waves of inspiration and go with it. The problem is, do you believe in it? Do you trust your gut feeling? How often you wake up thinking, I'm going to take that art course that I've seen somewhere. And you feel so inspired. The day goes by. You go to work, come back, and I'm, well, I'm too old. Old dogs don't learn new tricks. But they do. Science proves to us that actually we keep on learning irrespective of age. Fred Gage in San Diego, at the University of San Diego, California, San Diego in 2002, proved to us in a beautiful experiment that we grow new neurons, new synapses are created when we expose ourselves to the new. So the rule of thumb is to expose ourselves to the new and keep exposing ourselves to the new and keep exposing and in that mode because we have an inbuilt system to mirror what we are seeing, the mirror neurons, we capture and then we can start exercising and it's going to manifest in us. But we need to expose ourselves to the new. That's why Jesus said courage to learn the new. It's strange, it's awkward, I've never, of course the new is strange, because it's new. We've never seen it before. But then you keep working on it, and then it becomes old. And then you need to open ourselves to another new again. Each new book, new person, new self, every day. And Leon Denis continues, these waves of inspiration can help our evolution as they come from divine regions. So he's going to emphasize, and now we're going to merge with what precisely we've experienced. Art is about harmony. The true art is about harmony. Finding that harmonious current. Leon Denis, ahead of our time, talks about it. He says that there are harmonious currents. Let's not forget. Currents, waves of thoughts, feelings, vibrations. Okay? And he mentions to us, forces directed by superior will produce a fluidic current which has considerable vibratory power. So it's about tuning in. That's why in a mediumistic meeting, you're going to see people saying, I saw children singing. And another medium is going to say, ah, it's so funny, I didn't see them. Because we're tuned to different channels. That doesn't mean they don't exist. But these currents exist as we speak. So if you're home feeling sad, remember. There are good currents. It's our choice to connect. Like Wi-Fi. You open many options. Huh? Some you can't log in because you have a password. You need a password. But this password, what is the password to connect to this current? Huh? What is the password? Hmm? What do you think? Love? Kardec? In item 213 of the Medium's book, we read this Monday at our mediumistic meeting, right? And there he says, the connection is about having pure intention. When we want to progress, and this is in us because we're children of God. Some people say, no, but Vanessa, I'm not good enough. I made a lot of mistakes. And yet, we're children of God. We cannot trash ourselves out. At any given moment, we need to learn how to reinvent ourselves. Even if I spent 60, 70 years of my life 
repeating the same old mistakes. There is a moment I say enough. I want the new because I'm a child of God. Nobody can dictate when we are going to do that turning point. It's up to us. But we have that power to do it. And he says more. These waves will travel in space and imprint onto less evolved spirits. This is so beautiful. Andrea Lewis in the book Action and Reaction has a beautiful expression. He says that the zones of hell, meaning of people who are disturbed, discarnated, incarnated, I always being supervised by the superior ones. You think it's chaos, but it's like parents allowing children. Yeah, it's an organized chaos because we can see there is limit. And now we understand a little more about the mechanisms of it all. These vibrations enveloping the less evolved spirits through the perispirit, our spiritual body. These less evolved spirits, some people call them evil spirits, they can feel some of the waves and the perispirit of theirs will be colored in a more vivid tone and will feel great sensation related to that tone. It's therapy without words. Sometimes we say, I want to help that person, but I don't know how. Here's how. I say a prayer. I visualize something good happening for that person. That's it. You're helping. Because that's traveling. And the good spirits are using that co-creation of ours to bathe that person in new energies. That's why Chico Xavier, every night, no matter how late he would go to sleep, he would sleep and pray for 10,000 people. For the people in his street, the other street, the other one, the other not. And the historians say that often he would be caught up by sunrise and he didn't sleep. He was praying, visualizing the good for other people. We can do this. Insomnia, great time to pray. I can't sleep, okay, so I'm going to pray. Until I fall asleep, and then probably will fall asleep very quickly. <laughs> right? So, Leon Denis, in, the, in a book that is here and here after or after death, two different translations, he says, art under all forms will discover in it inexhaustible sources of inspiration and emotion. In art, the skeptic will find faith the discouraged hope, all those who suffer the profound idea that a law of justice presides all, over all things. Art is part of us. What do we need to do? Leon Denis says, purify our thought and heart. And art can help us achieve it. You see how much more we need to work in our lives to really expand? The universe is expanding, and so are we. We need to expand ourselves. This beauty is within us. When we talk about art, we're talking about harmony, we're talking about beauty. And Leon Denis says, beauty is a divine attribute which God has inserted in all beings, all of us. And art is the search, the study, and the manifestation of this eternal beauty. Let's repeat it. Art is the search, the study, and the manifestation of this eternal beauty that we have in us. So if I am not working 
in my artistic aspects. I am impaired, limiting myself. We need to find ways. It may be the art of cooking, maybe the art, I'm not gonna say cleaning, but there is art in cleaning too, <laughs> come on. Right? To put some harmony in the aromas of the house, right? It's aromatherapy too. But we're talking about painting, dancing, singing, drawing, creating poetry, writing, finding that beauty and allowing it to externalize itself. Our schools need to open themselves up even more. And probably that's one of the reasons why we have so many problems there, because we're not balancing it out. He then says the eternal law of the universe is the sublime objective of creation, which is the fusion of good and beauty. So in spiritism, we see beauty as something completely different. Beauty as harmony is God's creation. It's beyond physical beauty. It's part of it, but it's beyond it. It's about harmony. That's why we talk about harmony in our sound vibrations. When Kardec asked the spirits, what is a spirit? The spirit said, with your words, it's hard to say, but we would say it's like a divine flame. Think about a divine flame. We vibrate. Because we have it up there. <laughs> Gonna use it more for the studies, but the flame. Okay, a flame radiates. And here we have it. This is us, and then we are not, we're connected to the physical body, but not inside of it. So, as we are vibrating, the question is, are we vibrating harmoniously? Because that's our goal, to vibrate harmoniously, visualizing ourselves. How am I vibrating right now? So when we talk about music, for example, we talk about harmonious sound vibrations. There are types of music that certainly are not harmonious. So we would say, they don't help us because they make that flame become very, ooh, all over the place. But when we want to vibrate harmoniously, how does it happen? Let's see what Leon Denis says, since we focused on the singing part of it tonight. Harmonious sound vibrations introduces balance and rhythm in all things. The law of harmonious vibrations influences also physical health due to its action towards the human fluids. So we already have scientific findings showing to us that listening to specific types of classical music can be very beneficial to our health. Mozart is one of them. Right? We have baby Einstein showing a lot of music, Mozart's music to babies, and it's very be it's beneficial for health because we're talking about calibrating our vibrational aspect. It's almost as if we're being tuned by that music. Sound, rhythm, and harmony are creative forces. If we could evaluate the power of sound vibrations onto the fluidic matter and its way of aggregating the atoms, we would achieve the secret of spiritual energy. So listening to music that makes us feel serene, 
harmonious. But in the spirit realm, he says, sound is not the sensation produced by noise, but the sensation induced by the satisfaction produced by spiritual and moral goodwill. So for the good spirits, it's all about the end result of these vibrations. That's how they experience this rhythm the vibrational tone. In the book Liberation by Andrea Lewis, interesting enough, we're talking about vibrations. Andrea Lewis describes a specific apparatus that a group is using in a particular part of the spiritual realm to verify the vibratory tone of the ones who are there. So what we say, it doesn't count. It counts what we vibrate. So then there is this group that is selected by this machine as the group of the greedy spirits. But then there is a man, he raises his hand and says, I'm not greedy. He said, yes, you are. I mean, these were not very evolved spirits who were taking care of it all, but they say, no, you, you are greedy. And he says, no, 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 but I'm not. I, I didn't have money in my last incarnation. I was an intellectual. And the other spirits returned saying, and that's why you're greedy, because you knew it and you kept it for yourself. You read the books, you studied, for yourself you didn't share so you're greedy so there there are different forms of greed not only greed related to material resources but knowledge even spirituality sometimes we see in some religious traditions we see people who think that there is the world of the initiates only those who go through a certain level and you don't share that knowledge with anybody. Oh my gosh. And then comes spiritism and opens wide to everybody and says, no, we're going to keep it public. Mediumship is for everyone. Kardec inaugurates a new era. And he gives a manual and all the resources and says, if you want to, you can do it anywhere in the world and you don't need to ask permission of anybody. Thank you, Kardec. We don't have a pope. We don't have hierarchy. The federations that exist in the organizations out there are to support the growth, but they are not supposed to regulate it. And Chico Xavier always said, if I have to ask permission or be approved of by any federation, I wouldn't be spiritist. So that's why he never affiliated himself. He supported them, but he never affiliated himself with the federations. Because in spiritism, we no longer run a hierarchy. If you have a good idea, you, you want to open a spiritist uh, center elsewhere, God bless you. You don't need permission of anybody. But it takes responsibility, commitment. And that's why, though public, we don't see it popping up like crazy, like popcorn, because it takes a lot of work, no money, and a lot of effort on everybody else. So these spiritual and moral goodwill, they radiate. Just as a teaser, as we march towards wrapping up, because they talk about, Leonini talks about poetry, writing, acting, everything. But we can say it tonight, everything. On Tuesdays at Cardiac Radio at 9.30 p.m., we have Fred Gouveia and Josana Vaz. Fred Gouveia in New York and Josana Vaz from the Inner Enlightenment Spirit Society in New York. They are both artists. One is a musician conductor and the other one is an actress. And they are spiritists 
and they study this book every Tuesday at 9.30 p.m. at Kardec Radio. So just as a teaser, since we're talking about sounds, music, specifically tonight, Leon Denis talks about what this do, re, mi, sol, la, si, do, and do symbolizes celestial blue. This is how advanced Leon Denis is in the understanding of it all. For us, it may sound like Greek, it's like, what, what is he talking about? But keep it as a teaser, okay? Quietness, peace of the soul provided by prayer. The, the ones who know about music and study, they will, they will help us somewhat translate this understanding. Like me represents the strength in love, willingness to love represents the sunlight, golden light. Soul, harmonious note, the consolidation of me plus do, bright tone, bluish gray. This is just a teaser to see how much knowledge there is in this book and how advanced it is in so many ways. And Leon Denis was not a musician, etc. So a scholar in spiritism. And since we love poetry and poetry's music, as he says, poetry in reality is a form of music. Poetry is an expression of the beauty propagated in all of the universe. We are saying this, sharing this with you, because the good spirits want us to be inspired. When we work in this search of beauty through art, we find better vibrations and wisdom, love, is just the end result of it all. So tonight, we're being asked to revisit that part of us and give a chance to your co-creative powers, your search of beauty, the good, the just, inside of all of us okay it's just a teaser for us since we felt it now we understand a little more and it's an opportunity for us to feel it again as we prepare ourselves for the passes would you like to sing as we prepare for the passes yes do you mind staying here Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that okay? Ah, uh, yes. Thank you. I don't need the mic. is not a song. I call it Celestial Singing Passes. So uh, Vanessa 